communicating clearly with graphs and tables. So who is Edward Tufte? He's the author of the Visual Display of Quantitative Information, which he self-published. It's an amazing book. Uh, you should check it out of the library if you have a chance. Um, and the whole idea was how best can we display quantitative information visually, as you might um, guess. So um, this is this, if I can get rid of that, this says um, army decline with distance, time, temperature, geography. It's just a really cool graph. And the width of this is how big the army is. And this is Napoleon's march and his army gets smaller and smaller. That's not really relevant to economics, but it's a cool graphic. So we want to make cool graphics too. What makes a, a graphic a good graphic? So I'm just going to use one of Tooth Day's um, suggestions. I think it's a really important one. It's the idea that the ink to information ratio should be low. So what does that mean? It means if the ink does not convey information, don't have it. So those shadows in Excel figures, those 3D um, bars where there's nothing on the third dimension, get rid of them. They just distract the viewer. They don't help convey information. Same thing about grid lines or borders that are unnecessary. Um, and you don't want to have too many decimals, especially on figure axes because, well, let me show you an example. Okay, so I'm going to go to a figure that I found from some old work I had done. Um, I made it a little worse than it was, but it wasn't too good. I hadn't toothified it yet, um, or at the time. Okay, so let's just look first at what the figure is conveying. It says, Figure 1, first receipt of lottery scholarship at UNM, 1997 to 2005, by income and ethnicity. And so this is the numbers of students here. And then we have uh, the bars are broken up into higher income and low income. So we can see that for non-Hispanic white students, over 6,000 received the lottery scholarship. Um, and then most of them were not low income as defined by the study. And if we look at Hispanic students, we see that about 5,000 received it and a greater proportion of these students were low income. Uh, Asian is a very small group, uh, American Indian and African American are small. Uh, but you can see for the, especially for the American Indian, that about half of those who received it were higher income and half were low income. Okay, so that's pretty clear, but can we make this picture even clearer? Well, here's here's some tooth day problems. First of all, um, your reader doesn't, or your viewer certainly doesn't need to know that they they were 0. 0.00. So you, there should never be decimals um, when you have large numbers in the axes. So I'm going to take care of those first. So I double click and I get to a menu where I can work on the uh, number. Okay, so I'm going to take those decim decimal places down to zero. Okay, so that already looks better, but I'm going to even make it better than that. Um, what about these grid lines? Do they really give me that much information? Let's see what happens when I take them away. Ah, okay, so that graph actually now, at least to me, it, it makes me feel calmer. It's not quite as busy. Um, do we need all of these um, numbers, every thousand? Well, we can adjust the scale too. If you look at the scale, well, I want 7,000 to be at the top, um, and so it's hard to divide that evenly, but Let's say I just go for really big divisions, 3,500. Let's see what that looks like. That might be too little information. I don't know. How would we know what these really small ones are? Um, so, uh, but I'm going to leave it like that because I think that that's pretty good. Um, this, These lines here are not necessary. Let's get rid of those. Let's see if I can do that. So that's the line in the plot area. Let's get rid of those. We might That might be too much. Yeah, that's a little radical. We still want a line here, so I'm going to get that one back. Uh, I, I, yeah. Let's get that one back. So I'm just going to put the line back there. All right. Um, compared to what it looked like before, this is now a much cleaner uh, uh, graph. Oh, there's one other thing. What's with these, like, 
These look like some kind of weird uh, candies or something. The three dimension, and there's a shadow, bad. That doesn't convey any information, it's only distracting. So shadow off, we do not want the shadow. And then this weird blobby thing, that's a 3D format. Let's make that none. Ah, okay, and we can do the same thing for these. No, th no 3D format. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the shadow. You never want a shadow. That's just distracting. Okay. <sighs> okay, so now this is a much better graphic than it was. Okay, um, going back to the PowerPoint. So that's the ink to information ratio on a, on a figure. Okay, um, in tables, there's similar uh, there's a similar rule. So the column headings should be combined where possible so that you're not seeing the same thing over and over again. Um, numbers that are identical in every column or row should be presented only once. And uh, no zeros preceding decimals. A lot of things you read will have zeros preceding the decimals, but you're going to see how when you take them out it makes it easier to read. Okay, so let's go to my next example. And that should be right here. Okay. So here's a table from a manuscript um, that I recently received to review. It says, Table 2, Effective Being an Only Child on Marital Characteristics by Gender and Location, Standard Error in Parentheses. Okay, so one thing, um, this is not quite tooth day, but this is also something about thinking about uh, what your tables look like. Notice that this is uh, capitalized just at the beginning. That's okay, but then I want to keep it consistent. So consistency is really important in uh, your tables. And here's what I mean by repeating. Rural and women, rural and men, urban women, urban men. Well, that's um, sort of unnecessary information. I can, I, can re, I can redo that. So let me show you how I'm going to redo that. Um, if you go to the table layout, I'm going to put a row in there and then I'm going to merge the rows like this. Okay, and then I'm going to bring rural up here. Well, actually, let me think about this. Men, uh, women and men get married at different ages. Uh, so we probably really want to be comparing the women to the women and the men to the men. So I'm going to actually, no, you know what? I'm just going to leave it for now. So I'm just going to put rural up here and urban up here. And you're going to see that this is going to clean it up. Get rid of that. Okay, so wherever we can, I have to repeat women and men because um, once I group them, I'm going to have to do that. But that's really going to clean that up. What is this groups? That's unnecessary information. I'm going to get rid of that um, row. That's unnecessary information. It doesn't convey anything. Okay, so what is this? Well, this, these are regression uh, results. You're going to learn about them. But for now, let's just think about them, or if they are, just numbers. And I've got lots of um, decimals here. So there's like too much information. This last, do I really need to go that far out in regression um, estimates? The answer is no. Three decimals are plenty specific. So as I do this, you can see that it really cleans up. It makes it much easier to read because your mind is like, ah, there's TMI, and I'm taking away some of the information. It makes it much easier to read. That one only has three. Okay, so this one I'm just going to round up. Okay, so that's a nice, uh, much nicer row. That has three. Oops, that has four. We don't need those preceding zeros. Let's get rid of those. Oh, this is an, a stray uh, row. Let me get rid of that. Sorry about that. That was I was setting this up. Okay. Oh, look at that. Well, that is just absolutely no information provided there. Let's get rid of that. That. Wait, I don't need this either. No, I don't. Okay, let me get rid of that. All right. Um... Well, I'm feeling better already. Okay, so get rid of these preceding zeros.
Okay, and there. Hmm. Okay, only child, number of observations. Okay, those are all different, so I need those. Um, the border here isn't very pretty, but look at that compared to this table. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see better. Okay, which table would you rather study? I would rather study this one. It just has less information. Okay, so that's an example. Those are two examples of applying tooth day principles. They really clean things up. Okay.